is God bless. Welcome back to my channel. I am Charlene and I wanted to have a sit down with you all about um, scripture that actually was a part of my devotion through the YouVersion app. I am doing this devotion called No Offense and they mentioned this scripture, but I must say that this is probably the second time that I read across, ran across these scriptures in reference to devotion where I'm like, not only did I have the wrong impression, but someone tried to imprint the wrong impression on me. Cause you know, you can't really help how people teach you something or how people uh, perceive scripture, but you can help how you go back in and conclude yourself. And I think my biggest lesson, cause God knows I love this person. I love this person to death. However, I do now see that their idea of what the scripture was implying was completely wrong. And I want to say I talked about the scripture again on this channel before, but if so, I'm going to have to find a video and make sure I was talking correctly because I don't think I was. <laughs> um, not entirely, but you'll get what I'm saying when I give you the scripture. Well, anyway, everyone, every woman at least should be really familiar with the scripture where Mary and Martha, Martha, the, the, <laughs> Martha was in the presence of Jesus and one was worshiping him and in his face, you know, listening to him and learning. And the other was busy cleaning and preparing. And I'm going to read that scripture to you before I mess anything else up this morning. <laughs> I am reading from Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42 in the New King Translation. I'm actually using uh, my MacArthur Study Bible this morning. And it reads, Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she said she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his words. But Martha was distracted with such serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. So, let's digest this. Now, the subtitle of this passage in the MacArthur Study Bible is Mary and Martha Worship and Serve. So, that just caught my eye literally when I picked this Bible because I actually was reading this at my other desk with another Bible, my Jesus Bible. But it's interesting because when this scripture was first mentioned to me, it was given the impression that um, Martha, like not what she said, but what she was doing was wrong. Now, even in the text, I'm going to have to go back and look because um, it did say, but Martha was distracted with much serving. So, as I'm reading this now, and I'm taking my time with this, because we are created to worship and serve. Let's be clear on that. We are. Martha's issue wasn't that she was serving. It was that she was too busy serving. So then she fell to worship. And I also find it interesting because she went to Jesus to try to address Mary's action and Jesus ended up addressing her action. 
This is so plain, y'all. We, we stand before God for our own account. Not your sister, not your brother, not your husband, not your children. You will stand before God for yourself. And he will judge according to what you did and what you said. And in this particular instance, you have, because Martha was the one to offer Jesus into her home. So let's look at it like this. She initiated kindness. And Jesus came, he accepted the invitation and it became a, a whole other blessing for Mary because Mary sat, talked and learned from what he was speaking. She was giving him attention, her time. She was committed to his presence. Now, as a stay at home mom and a housewife, I can assure you that sometimes, most of the time, I get so caught up and so occupied in my work that I get frustrated, I get anxiety, I get stressed, and I even pull to Martha. I get in my feelings. I'm like, these kids really need to help me. Like, don't they say I'm struggling? I get upset about, like, if I see my husband relaxing and I'm doing a whole bunch of dishes and I got to do a whole bunch of chores or the baby's crying and a lot is going on. I, I pull Martha. I said, or I, sometimes I say, and sometimes I keep it in my mind, and I say, I'm like, God, doesn't he see that I am struggling? Why isn't he doing anything? Please make him get up and come help me. Please make him come over here and pay attention to the need that's right here. Does that sound like you? Because <laughs> that's definitely me. And right here in the scripture, again, um, Jesus said to Martha, 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 like, my child, my child, <laughs> you are worried and troubled about many things, not just one, not just two, but many things, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which would not be taken away from her. This goes back to when I was going over the scriptures about the fruit of the spirit, where it said, against these things, there is no law. And I feel like here, Jesus was letting Martha know that there is no law, there is no rule when it comes to worshiping. You give God your time. And he didn't say neglect your home. He didn't say she was wrong entirely. I think that's the key point here because again, when this scripture was given to me, it made it seem like this is a and or, excuse me, one or the other. But as I'm reading now and as the scripture keeps coming to me, my understanding is that the key is balance. And if anything, even in the midst of your house being chaotic, you got a whole bunch of toys to do. Uh, your children is playing and all the toys and stuff is on the floor. In the midst of all of that, your relationship with God is still the most important. And don't let that go over your head because I'm nobody saying sitting there in a house full of feces and dirty diapers and dirty dishes. No one's saying that. But what I'm hearing is priority. God has created us women to be nurturing and to be keepers of our home. That would never change. Because mind you, the Bible is not a contradiction in no way, form, or fashion. If there's a contradiction, the contradiction is within yourself, not God. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And his law does not change. And for us women, we have a great big duty. We have a lot to do, but we must use wisdom. When it's time to sit down and read scripture or to have Bible study or to go to church, your mind and your heart should be steadfast on our Lord. Don't worry about who's going to wash the dishes. Don't worry about if he's going to help you tuck the kids away tonight. 
focus on God. Remember the scripture, seek ye first. Seek ye first. Seek God first. Focus on God. Focus on your relationship with him. Strengthen that. Because when you strengthen that, he will strengthen you in areas where you are weak or you may be stumbling. Like in this case, it would be for, like I said, us women who get frustrated and aggravated when we feel like we're doing every single thing by ourselves. When we feel like our plate is too much. We feel like the burden is too heavy to carry. But God will strengthen you and he will see you through. But you have to remember always that the source of your strength isn't yourself. It's God. So then you need to go to the plug. You need to plug into Jesus. Get your strength. Strengthen your faith. Be encouraged. Be uplifted. And then head back out into the battlefield. Balance. Put God first. Worship him in spirit and in truth, which is really hard to do when your mind is focused on what everybody else is not doing or the lack of human help you have or how many responsibilities you have. Mind you, as a total family of seven, I hear you. You got one kid doing this, one kid doing that, this kid is struggling, this child's too hyper. Uh, hubby's in his phone or watching TV, the dishes are piling up, the floor needs mopping, the chairs need to be wiped off, the walls got crayon on it. I done been there and done it all, honey. <laughs> My youngest is 18 months, I think. <laughs> I hate the month thing. Um, Jace is uh, four, he will be five in November. Uh, the next to the oldest it was 14. I mean, next to the youngest, 14. And we have two 15-year-olds. One will be 16 in January. The other will be 16 in July. We have a bunch. And then sometimes we have the nerve to tell other kids in the family, come over and sleep over. <laughs> There's a lot going on here. But God is a source of our strength. And he keeps us. And we keep a balance. Because just like we understand that for our children, it's good that they have a childhood and that they have fun. We also understand that it's good that they are disciplined and that they learn to abide by rules and they learn to be social outside of the home because there's a real big, great world out there. And you want to make sure your children are as balanced as possible. Even in aspect of this scripture here where we can look at a certain aspect of our lives as important. Like a lot of people, I see this a lot in the Christian community. Like a lot of people put a whole lot of emphasis on, um, well, I'm just going to church and I got to get there and I got to join all these programs and I got to stay busy in this manner. And then their home is entirely neglected from the children to the spouse to the keeping of the home itself. You have to work on balance in all areas of your life. Ask God to help you where you're slacking. And instead of comparing contrast, instead of saying, I'm too good for this, or this isn't good enough for me, or no one should be doing that, get in your mind that Jesus wants you to be a balanced Christian. Worship him, keep your home. Worship him, serve. And the big thing is, because what we need to establish is, what serving is necessary. Like you have a lot of um, individuals and things where the emphasis is put on the actual home itself. I have to keep the house squeaky, spotless, clean at all times. And they make that priority, whereas the children are socially neglected because there's no conversation with them. There's no engagement time with them. It's just do your work and I'm gonna go do this. Um, go sit down, not right now. And I'm gonna take care of this. I got work to do. I'm over here. It's hard. Trust me, it's hard because even though I don't have a nine to five job, I do YouTube. And it's really hard to balance being a pastor's wife, being a wife, being a mother, being a YouTuber, an influencer, and being that person that's associated with my husband as pastor. Um, a lot of people like saying first lady, I don't. Um, I don't think the idea and the concept around that in most people's eyes and heart isn't biblical, 
But I will say that being a pastor wife isn't just nothing. Like the role doesn't not exist. It's very important because people look to you to be an example, rightfully so. And by you being that example, you have to learn how to balance your life. You have to learn that you, the two reasons, the two important reasons, there's two important reasons. But if all else fails, like I tell y'all many times, there's been days when I wake up and I, or right before I go to bed, I look around at the house and I'm like, it's pretty messy in here. Probably should clean up. But then I have that little still voice that's like, but you didn't read your Bible today. You, your your cup is empty. You need to fill it back up. And you do. Like, imagine just going through life and it's just cooking and cleaning and mending and tending. Cooking, cleaning, mending, and tending. And you're never spending that quality time with God. You're never reading your word. You're never praying. You're never talking to him. Your relationship with God would be weak and you would not be able to stand before him and say, well, I had all these things to do. Because you have to pick and choose your battle. Be wise through all areas and situations in your life. And that's all I got to say. Cause I'm a, I could talk about this on and on and on. But I will say this. In general, in a world of Barbies, be a Mary and Martha, okay? <laughs> Do not be consumed by this world. Do not try to blend in with this world. You are called to be different. And your different may not be easy. And you may get frustrated, but God is keeping you and he is with you. And you are doing the right thing. I love you guys. God bless. Take care. Bye.